Welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Nowadays I'm exploring the Airbus A310 which is a default plane for the Microsoft Flight Simulator and in this regard I'm planning to make a series of videos in which I'm going to break down all the information related to a flight for this plane in different videos uh, so that it's easy uh, for you to full, uh, look for a specific information on my channel and um, obviously I will be also making a complete video uh, for this plane. Uh, so right now I am parked at uh, King Khalid International Airport in Riyadh. I will be doing a short flight to Abu Dhabi and it's a very interesting uh, flight route. I've been flying it a lot in real life as well and plus in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, so um, it's roughly a, a two hours flight and hopefully uh, you will just uh, learn something from this video. Uh, as uh, every time when I'm making a video, I keep this thing in mind that the beginners will be watching it. So I try to touch the basics. So right now you can see the plane is in the cold and dark state. And uh, this is the electronic flight bag of the plane. Over here, you've got multiple settings. And um, as you can see that you can set the different states uh, for this plane, cold and dark, on GPU, on APU, or ready for takeoff. So right now I've selected uh, the cold and dark state. Um, you can see it's activated or you can also deactivate that. Remember this thing that uh, as soon as you start this plane uh, from the ramp or from the gate, um, this plane will automatically be in the cold and dark state, but you can always change the states of this plane by going to the electronic flight bag. There are a few settings over here, uh, which I would just like to take you through. Uh, units, I've set it to kgs and um, you can also change it to pounds. Iris alignment, it's actually an inertial reference system. There are three knobs in this plane, which is known as the air data inertial reference system or AD iris. If you can just look at the overhead panel, one, two, and uh, three uh, over here, okay? You have to actually turn on uh, these uh, knobs to nav in order to have the GPS coordinates so that the flight management guidance system knows uh, the position of the plane and then it can fly accordingly. So if uh, this iris alignment is set to realistic, it will take seven to eight minutes for the alignment. If it is shed, uh, set to short, it will take uh, two to three minutes and instant, it's done instantly. Link instruments, I've turned it on. You can see there are different instruments on the captain side and the co-pilot side. So every time when I make a change over here, uh, let's say if I set the altimeter, it will be set over here on the co-pilot side as well and over here as well. So I've linked them. Otherwise, if you don't link them, then you have to, you know, adjust it separately uh, for the flight. Okay. Um, break temperature, tap to reset. No need to do this. Um, after landing, if you go for maximum uh, breaks, settings, as you can see, they're over here. Maximum, medium, and low. So during the landing, the brakes are automatically applied, whether you want to have some low braking, medium braking and max braking. So if you go for a max braking, the brakes might get heat up. So you can always reset the temperature of the brakes. Uh, default thrust reduction altitude. Uh, thrust is automatically re reduced in, uh, in the planes after the takeoff because obviously the plane cannot keep on climbing uh, at full thrust. So the thrust is reduced and the vertical speed of the plane is changed accordingly so that the plane maintains the speed. Thrust is not maximum and the plane keeps on climbing. Uh, so for this uh, flight, I will be using 1,500, uh, but you can always change it. Then you can calibrate the levers. I'm not touching this topic. They are already calibrated. There is no issue. Uh, but if you, you, you want to try it, you can do it yourself, or maybe I'll make a separate video for this. Reverse on uh, throttle axis. Uh, actually, reverse thrust is uh, these two levers on the thrust, which actually activates the reverse thrust of the plane if I just go back all the way. Uh, so what happens is this, that you know, during the landing, uh, if you activate the reverse thrust, the engines, they just open and the thrust of uh, the engine is reversed. So instead of going forward, the plane starts to go backwards due to which there is a braking by the engine. So after the landing, you try to stop the plane using uh, the reverse thrust uh, by reversing the thrust of the engines. You use speed brakes and then you have these auto brakes. So these three things actually help the plane to stop. So I will be covering this uh, thing in the iris approach and landing. So I've set it on my controller. I'm using the Airbus uh, A3, 
uh, 20s or the a bus controller uh, from the thrust master uh, i've got the uh, what do you uh, call it the officer pack <laughs> yes so you no matter what you uh, what uh, controller you using you can always change this realistic autopilot disconnect no i have set it to no you can always change it so uh, these were these were the few settings uh, that i just wanted to take you through this is actually the electronic flight bag the tab in the plane and uh, interestingly we have this in the abus a310 now you can see the plane is in the cold and dark state uh, so we have to get some power in the plane first of all if you go to the overhead panel you will see these three buttons over here which is for the battery the plane has got different power sources um initially when the plane is in the golden dark state you turn on the batteries so with the batteries you have some initial power in the plane then you have external power which is over here uh you go to the external power because plane cannot keep on running on the battery obviously the batteries will run out of power after some time so that's why you need some external power it is connected to the plane through a gpu or the ground power unit and uh, uh once you are about to disconnect the external power the plane at least needs some independent power so that's why um you switch uh, the apu which is over here uh, auxiliary power unit you switch to the auxiliary power unit and this is actually a generator at the back of the plane which not only provides uh, electrical power to the plane but also bleed air which is a compressed air used to start the engines and after the push back you move to the engines you start the engines this is the panel for the engine start uh, you turn this knob the ignition selector to a and then you start your engines in a sequence and once you have power from the engine you turn off the apu so this was a little bit of introduction because when i was new to the flight simulation and i learned how to start the plane from the cold and dark state and i used to watch different videos i was unable to understand that uh, why these all buttons are pressed <laughs> randomly so it took me a long time to actually understand this so first of all let's turn on these three buttons to have some power in the plane now you can see the plane is up and running now uh, there are few things that you have to check before you connect uh, the external power just make sure that the wipers are off you can see uh, the these are knobs for the wiper for the captain and for the first officer or for the co-pilot and it is in the off state then make sure that the gear lever is down and uh, then the throttle is in the idle position as you can see it's in the idle position if it's not then you can adjust it and uh, make sure also uh, that on the your controller the thrust is in the idle position the parking brake is set which is over here on the pedestal i will just keep on um, also telling you about different parts of the cockpit uh, for your understanding okay and uh, then you have uh, slats and flaps this is the lever for the slats and flaps just make sure uh, they are retracted and um, the flaps actually uh, they are um, uh, they extend the wing span uh, not only to provide lift to the plane at lower speeds but also provide drag to lower the speed and uh, during the takeoff you need flaps and slats to basically lift the plane up in the air uh, because you know uh, the plane is at a slow speed on the runway and during the takeoff as compared uh, to the flight mode uh, or you can say uh, uh, during the cruising Uh, um part of the you know, of the flight and uh, then make sure uh, that the fuel levers are down uh, for the engine one and engine two yeah, they are also down the speed brake is retracted these are actually um uh, flaps on uh, the wings which provide drag then uh, the red uh, weather radar is off this is the control for the weather uh, radar and you can see it's in the off position you can always turn it on after the plane starts and uh, then uh, after all these checks we have to turn on the external power so as you can see the external power is right now available if the external power is not available which means the ground power unit is not connected to the plane you have to connect it to the plane and uh, you can do it from the electronic flight bag just go over here and you can see that the gpu is connected if it's not connected then you will click this option and you can have the power from the gpu similarly you can always connect the jetway as you can see it's getting connected and uh, that's it so as the gpu is not connected i can go to the external power so let's turn on the external power and now you can see 
plane has the full power and uh, everything is up and running now you can see there is this error coming iris uh, fault because uh, i haven't turned on the iris uh, knobs to nav i have to do it the inertial reference system of the plane so that the plane knows where its position is as uh, i've told you before that if you set it to realistic it will take seven to eight minutes but for this fly uh, flight and for these videos i will use instant so let's move them to nav all three of them one two and three and now you can see that the alignment mode is coming and now the iris alignment is complete and it's there you can get rid of this master caution over here on this plane and uh, then you have um, your uh, on the overhead panel you have this part for the oxygen just make sure that the oxygen supply is on as you can see this indicator is uh, the green part so it means you have oxygen in the plane and uh, then you have to do the annunciator light test, which is one of the scariest part of this video. <laughs> if you are flying in the night and you try to do this annunciator uh, light test, uh, it, will, it will scare you. Uh, so if you go over here on the overhead panel, you can see uh, this is the light test. If you move it to test. <laughs> so this sound is, let's do it again. Okay, this sound is really scary. Okay, one time I remember. It was two in the night and I just really got scared. I thought my system is possessed. Okay. Now, um, after all these uh, tests, I will go to the uh, pre-flight procedures. And um, for this, uh, first of all, we have to make a flight plan because obviously, if you don't have a plan, you don't know where to go. You don't know how much uh, the weight is um, and uh, how many passengers you are carrying. Obviously, uh, there is no use to do a flight. So I will go to the sim brief and I will just make a flight plan over there. And then I will just come back over here and begin with the pre-flight procedures. So this is uh, simbrief.com. It's a very interesting site um, and it has been there for a very long time. And um, I've been, I think, using it uh, for the flight planning since 2018. Simbrief.com, it's a free site where you can just come and make flight plans. Uh, the only catch is uh, the ARAC cycle, which is actually the aeronautical information um, uh, regulation and control. Uh, so this is actually ARAC cycle is a database which has all the information of the waypoints and the airways and the departure and arrival procedures for different airports. And um, if your ARAC cycle is not updated, you might make a flight plan over here in the sim brief, which is not uh, uh, matching uh, with the ARAC cycle of uh, the Microsoft flight simulator and you might have some disconnect. So for this, uh, maybe you can have just a um, uh, one-time subscription for one month, just update the ARAC cycle and maybe it can stay valid for the next six months or a year. And then maybe you can even renew it. This is one trick uh, for me. I am uh, always uh, uh, carrying on with the subscription uh, for the Navigraph because with the help of which I can have access to the airport charts and uh, the ARAC cycles. I can even update it for x 11 and 12. So in the sim brief, uh, you have to make your account. It's for free. And if your ARAC cycle is not updated, this button will be red. And if it's updated, up to date, you will see uh, green over here. So departure airport, you have to uh, enter it over here, which is OERK. This is actually uh, a cow code uh, for this airport. You, if you don't know the ECAO code for any airport, you can always Google that or you can look for that in the Microsoft Flight Simulator flight planning uh, or in the world map part of the flight simulator. And I will be going to OMAA, which is again the account code for the Abu Dhabi International Airport. And then I can have an alternate. Uh, I've already made uh, flight plans, so OMDB is coming, which is uh, the Dubai International Airport. So this will be the alternate. Now, if I come over here, I will uh, select Airbus A310-304. And let's look for it. Yes, this is it. 310, 304 in the Microsoft Flight Simulator, it can, comes as uh, dash 300, but over here, dash 304. Different number for the plane, but it's the same plane. And uh, in the variant of the airframe, you have to select any builds, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Airbus A310. So now you can see the flight plan is coming as after selecting the plane. And uh, you can see all the waypoints, Rima, Kibul, Altav, Gibus, and plus uh, there will be also airways, which I will just tell you what an airway is and then you have uh, uh, this uh, dotted line or route to Dubai International Airport so in, in case if you 
uh, go for a missed approach. Uh, you cannot land at Abu Dhabi International Airport. You can always change your flight plan and go to Dubai. This is a separate topic. I will be making another video uh, for this. But right now, uh, for this video, I will just land at Abu Dhabi International Airport. But I will just give you, give you a little bit of introduction how you can change it. Then there is this uh, option as a cost index. It's actually a number which determines the range of the plane, uh, whether you want to uh, increase the range of the plane by reducing the speed during the flight or you want to decrease the range of the plane by increasing the speed. So it's actually the rate of fuel burn. If you have a small number, the plane goes uh, uh, at a slower speed, but the range of the plane increases. You can do longer flights. And if you're using a big number, uh, let's say 80 or 90 or maybe 100, the plane then goes at a very high speed and uh, then uh, more fuel is burned and the range of the plane decreases. Remember this thing that if you have a very high cost index, um, the, the climb rate is also impacted. So if you are going at a high speed, your climb rate is less. And if you're going at a, uh, at a, at a slower speed, uh, the climb rate is good. So this is how um, you can just uh, set this number. Obviously, it's given by the airlines to determine how much fuel is burned during the flight. I will keep it 30 for this uh, video. And uh, it's a small number. So the plane will go at a slow speed, but I'll have some good climb rate. Now, after entering uh, the cost index, uh, you can uh, just select uh, the departure runway. You can see the ARAC cycle is coming. Even you can set the time uh, for the taxi in and for the a taxi out. Um, you can just leave this and uh, the flight rules uh, I've selected to um, uh, IFR instrument flying rules or you can have a VFR the visual flying rules but obviously as uh, uh, this is a fully automated plane so I will be doing an IFR um, the instrument flying rule flight. Okay, uh, the scheduled block time is coming one hour and 40 minutes so once you're making a flight plan over here in the sim brief you can see and how much time will it will take you for this flight. The departure runway, you can always select it. 15 left, right, 33 left, right. Uh, for this uh, video, I will be using uh, 33 right for the takeoff. And for the landing, I will use 31 left. Uh, then the altitude you can uh, select. I will be uh, flying at 35,000 feet. You can always set the altitude as per your flight plan. 35,000 feet is already coming, so I've selected this. And uh, then the passengers, I will be carrying full passengers, 238, which is the capacity of this plane. And then freight, I will set it to auto. Uh, payload, let's uh, leave it to auto. And zero fuel weight, leave it to auto. You can even uh, select full, which is 16,400 kilograms for this plane, or 16 tons. And that's it. Now you can see um, over here, uh, the route is coming, and uh, it has uh, four things in it which is the standard instrument departure, which is the SID. This is the first point. And you have the star, standard terminal arrival, which is the last point. And then you have the airways and the waypoints. Any value coming in alphabet is uh, your waypoint. As you can see, they are here on the flight plan, NERMI, BHR, and uh, so and so forth. And then you have uh, H976, the values coming in alphanumeric. These are the airways. Uh, you can always look at the airways by clicking this option. And then uh, there you will see multiple airways uh, which a plane can take. It's actually a road which a plane takes uh, from one point to another. And as you can see, H976 will take you to Musri. So if you uh, look at the flight plan, can I, can I find this, this point? Let me just look for it. Yes. You can see Musri is coming over here. And uh, this is the airway uh, that the plane will take after Altav. And uh, this is actually a line which is not following an airway because this is a standard instrument departure. Uh, so this is the way a uh, plane departs uh, from this airport. And uh, as you can see, these airways are combining at this uh, airport. So if a plane is not landing at Riyadh uh, airport, it will take any of the airways, and if it's going this part of the world, it will take it, uh, the airway will change. So that's how these airways are, and then there is another airway, and then there is a procedure for the arrival, which is actually not following any airway because uh, then the plane will be landing and following the star, which is the standard terminal arrival. So this is the uh, detail of the airways and the waypoints. They are automatically updated in the uh, the flight management computer FMC. 
or the MCDU, which is the uh, multi-function control and display unit in, uh, if you're talking about Airbus. So it will be automatically updated. You really don't have to worry about it. Uh, so just let, let me give you a little bit of introduction about the, uh, the star and the SID. So you can see there is a certain procedure a plane is following to land at uh, the runway 31 left. And uh, it starts after this point, Ukili. Uh, so this, um, yes, here it is. So after Ukili, uh, there is a point which is coming as UKIL 4C. And this actually updates all these waypoints, which tells the plane where to go, how to align itself uh, with the runway, and then go for uh, the landing. These, uh, all the points have uh, some constraints related to the altitude and to the speed which the plane has to follow. Now for this, you have to consult uh, the airport charts. So uh, just to give you an introduction, what I can do is this, I can generate a flight plan. Uh, we have to generate a flight plan because we will be importing it in the plane. And uh, for this, uh, we have to generate this flight plan. And uh, now you have it um, on your screen. You can always view the PDF, which is uh, the operational flight plan. If I click this, you will have a PDF uh, and uh, there is some information that you have to uh, refer to. Now, although it's a, it's a, it's a very complicated uh, document, if you are new to the operational flight plan, I remember for the first time seeing it and getting confused all the way. But there are a few things. Um, I would just like to simplify it for you. You have to see, you can see your cruise uh, index is coming because this is what you have to enter in the MCD of the plane. Then you have uh, the estimated uh, takeoff weight which is 116 tons or 116,049 kilograms landing weight after burning the fuel. And then you have the zero fuel weight, which is actually uh, the weight of the plane plus the passengers plus the cargo minus the fuel. So this is the zero fuel weight as the name indicates. And then you have uh, the block fuel that will be carrying for the flight. It's coming over here, which is uh, 11 tons or 11,058 kgs. Then you have... Uh, your uh, flight plan, which has the runway, uh, the departure airport, then you have uh, standard instrument departure, ALTA V1K, airway, uh, waypoint, airway, waypoint, airway, so and so forth, and then it will take you to the star, standard terminal arrival, arrival airport, and then the runway. That's it. So this is what you have to look at, and then you have uh, some other information. You can just uh, skip all these pages if you want to read it, you can just learn it on the SimBrief uh, site. And they have uh, a tutorial in which they will tell you how to read the complete operational flight plan, but I'm just taking you to th through the important points so that you can just at least do the flight and then you can uh, further enhance your knowledge of reading the operational flight plan. Then you have uh, the airport weather list. Um, uh, it's coming as like this. And then you have uh, some weather information. This is the wind 050. It's actually the heading of the wind. So, and uh, this is the speed of the wind, 0.4 knots. And then you have uh, uh, the temperature, maximum 34 degrees. Then the deviation from the uh, standard temperature. Then you have uh, the barometric pressure, it's QNH, 1010. Uh, so that's uh, what you want to consult. And then for the arrival airport, 30 knots uh, degrees. It's the heading of the, the wind, and uh, plus the speed, 13 knots. And then you have uh, your clouds information, and then you have temperature a maximum 30, minimum 50, 16, and then the barometric pressure in order to adjust the altimeter. This is what I will tell you why this number is used and how uh, you use it. So this is uh, what you have to look at. Uh, so right now I will just go back uh, to the sim brief. And in sim brief, I will uh, click this option and put into charts. If you have the subscription of Navigraph, you will then have access to this view. If you don't have, then obviously you will not be able to see it. Now, this is a complete flight plan in the Navigraph where you can have uh, uh, different charts. So I was talking about uh, the start, the standard terminal arrival. And if you look at uh, the screen below, you will see this option. If I click this, you will see this uh, interesting diagram, <laughs> which has the information of the, the, the standard terminal arrival. As you can see in the flight plan, uh, the rest of the waypoints are not there. So uh, you can see at this point, you clearly, after reaching it, your altitude should not be more than 15,000. Flight level 150 means 15,000. And the maximum speed, 250 knots. So by this point, you should be at 15,000 or below. 
and uh, speed should be 250 knots and uh, then so and so forth you can see and uh, by this point uh, you can you should be more than uh, 6000 feet and then you can further uh, go for the approach and then the final approach and landing and the speed is also coming atrin uh, so these are the things that you have to look at if you have access to the airport charts you can do it and then you can see there are two points coming pegum and atrin uh, for this airport uh, this these are actually uh, the transitions uh, for the approach so if you're coming from this point and you're going to land at 31 left you select atrin and uh, this is the point which is over here and if you're coming from this side and you're going to land at 31 right then you select pegum so that's uh, how you arrive at these runways so for 31 right you use this uh, point you will be coming to ukele and then uh, itugu or gad these are the points and then you land or from this point even if you change uh, your uh, flight plan you want to land at 31 left then you have to turn then right and then come over here to this point or met and then continue with the descent and uh, the approach so uh, itrin and pegum these are the two points but for this flight i will be using itrin so this was a little bit of introduction i just wanted to give you about the flight planning so as now i have the flight plan i can continue with the configuration of uh, the mcdu you can see this um, option is coming align iris because now the alignment is done you have to also get the coordinates in the uh, mcdu so that's why this option is coming uh, you can always clear clear it and uh, now on the first page you will see 310-300 uh, uh, the model of the plane is coming the engine is coming and uh, plus you have uh, the active database cycle which is the ARAC aeronautical information regulation and control this is actually a database as I told you before uh, so it's updated from 18th April to 16th May so this information is there then you go to menu and uh, in the menu you will see this option a cars if you click this uh, you will uh, be taken to this page which takes the username of your uh, sim brief account uh, you can get this uh, uh, number uh, from the account information in the sim brief if you go to the account information there is an option known as the pilot id once you have your pilot id you can always enter it over here press this um, left soft key the first one and then this username will be updated and then the MCDU will be connected with the same brief account and you can then import the flight plan. In order to import the flight plan, uh, just uh, press this button, request same brief, it will say pending and then it will take you to this page which is the initialization page. Now you're at the initialization page, you can see the departure airport is coming, arrival is coming and then uh, you have this option align iris. So if I click this, the, arinus, um, uh, the iris alignment will be done. Okay, now you can see GPS primary is coming, the nav grade accuracy updated. If it, if this message says company route uh, uplink done uh, because this is option for the company route. So if you're importing a flight plan from the sim brief, you'll get this. Now you can see the temperature, the cruising altitude is coming, nav accuracy upgraded. So now it means that you know, uh, the, now the plane has the accurate GPS coordinates. You can always clear this. And then the cruising uh, altitude wind is coming, 278 degrees, and uh, the speed is 44 knots. Then you have the cost index, uh, so 30, as I've entered it before. So you can select the, the cost index. You can see the cruising altitude is also coming, uh, 350, which is 35,000. Flight ID, um, I always use AA123, my initials, but you can use any flight ID that you want. So after this, um, what you have to do is this. You have to uh, set the passengers and uh, plus uh, the cargo. Uh, so if you go to this option, mass and balance, and go to this option, plan, and then you can see the, uh, the dry operating weight is coming, 80,000, payload zero, zero fuel weight is coming. Uh, obviously, the weight of the plane without fuel, without passengers, without anything. So it's 80 tons. So passengers will be full. So if I increase the passengers, you can see the zero fuel weight has increased. But if I set the fuel, the zero fuel weight remains the same. Uh, so uh, the fuel will be, uh, let me just go back to the, uh, to the PDF, the operational flight plan and get the fuel from there. You can see the block fuel is coming as 11 tons. So I can set it to 11 tons. That's it. 
Now you have to adjust the cargo. How much cargo is required? Just look at the zero fuel weight and adjust the cargo in such a way that the zero fuel weight reaches uh, to the zero fuel weight mentioned in the operational flight plan. So in the operational flight plan, 105.4 tons. So I will just try to adjust it like this. So keep increasing the cargo till the time you have 105.4. You cannot do it accurately. It's difficult. But, you know, it's kind of an estimation. So just try to do it like this. Okay. So I think I've said it. And uh, now you can see over here, uh, this uh, fuel is coming. It is as per the settings. In the Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can always set the fuel and the weight from here as well. But now, as you can do it from the electronic flight bag, but just let's do it from there. So now the total fuel is coming as 19.6 kilograms. But as soon as I uh, press this button, apply, the new weight and fuel will be applied. And it will change. Now the block fuel is coming as 11 tons. So this is what you have to do. That's it. So this is something required uh, from the MCDU part. And uh, I will tell you uh, why we configured the MCDU right now, because they are during the pre-flight procedures, there are a few things which you cannot do until the time you have the iris alignment. So uh, let's uh, set the seatbelt signs on now as the fueling is now complete. So you can turn on the seatbelt signs, then turn on the no smoking sign as well over here on the overhead panel. And uh, then the flight recorder has to be on. So if you go over here on the overhead panel, you will see this GND control uh, flight uh, recorder. Just turn it on. And um, then the nose switch off. Okay, <laughs> I'm actually going through the flight list that I've made. So now coming uh, to the exterior lights, there are many light options. I will just tell you uh, through the course of this video um, that um, how you interact uh, with these lights and why these lights are required. But right now, uh, we are going to set the strobe uh, to auto. This is actually a blinking white light, which blinks throughout the flight, in the morning, in the light. Uh, and um, it's auto because uh, this light is used um, after the plane takes off from... Uh, it's on the runway or takes off from the runway. And um, after the landing, the moment plane exits the runway, the strobe is off. So um, the plane automatically knows uh, the flight mode it is in and it turns on and off this light. Uh, for the Airbus uh, planes, you can always set it to auto. Either if you're flying Airbus A320, you can always do that. Then you have uh, your nav and logo uh, light. Um, it has got two settings, one and two. If you turn it to one, uh, your nav lights will be on. And if you turn it to two, the logo lights will be on. So if I move uh, to one, and the nav lights of the plane will be on. And if I go out of the plane, I will show you, you know, what these nav lights are. On the right wing, you can see this green light. So if any plane is uh, looking at uh, this plane and it sees a green light, it knows the, that the plane is going towards its right side. On, in the morning, obviously, it will not make any sense. But in the night, it's useful. And similarly, uh, the red light means the plane is going towards its left. So any other plane is looking at this red light, they will know the plane is going towards the left side. And then at the back, you can see these white lights. So if any plane sees white lights from, uh, so it knows that the plane is ahead of them. Okay, so these are the nav lights. And now you have turned on the nav lights. And uh, the rest of the lights, I will turn them on uh, before uh, the taxi and one light beacon before the engine start, okay? So right now only uh, these lights will be on and the rest of the lights will be off. Now uh, we have this uh, auto thrust system, uh, engine uh, DR, this part of uh, the panel. So you have to turn on the auto thrust system and then you have to also, also set the pitch trim. Uh, basically this is uh, the setting whether the nose, uh, nose of the plane will be uh, trimmed upwards or downwards uh, during the takeoff, during the flight, uh, because obviously if, the, um, if, the, if, if you have the headwind and the nose uh, will be pitched up, so the autopilot automatically adjusts it so that the plane remains leveled. So you need pitch trim. You cannot activate the pitch trim till the time you have IRS alignment. Uh, so let's say if you have set the IRS alignment to realistic and you turn on the AD IRS knobs to nav, but still, if the IRS alignment is not done, you will not be able to set the pitch trim. If the pitch trim is not up, uh, you cannot have uh, the information on this panel. Let me just uh, turn it off and see whether 
the FCU. Yeah, you can see now the flight control unit. This this part of the plane, FCU, uh, in front of you, it's all blank because the pitch trim is not active. So once you activate the pitch trim, now you can set all this information over here in the FCU. So ADRs alignment nav should be on. Uh, then after, if set to realistic, seven to eight minutes wait. Then turn on the pitch trim, and then you can have the controls over here. That's it. Then the yaw damper, it should be on as well. So these are the three things that you have to do. Uh, then uh, turn on the fuel pumps. These are all the controls for the fuel pumps. Th there is something interesting I want to tell you about uh, the Airbus uh, uh, controls. Um, if anything is on, uh, the button remains black. So all the black buttons, it means something good. But if um, uh, there is some light in any button, then you have to you know, give attention to. So this is the most interesting thing. So once you turn on the pumps, instead of saying on, they will just go black. So that's the beauty of the Airbus A310 and other Airbus planes as well. Now you have, the, uh, you have to turn on the window heater, obviously for the window there will be no fogging or icing on the windscreens. And then the probe heat, also turn it on. Now you can see after turning on the fuel pumps and the probe heat and the window heat, all the buttons have gone black, so it means they're on. That's it. And now um, you have to arm the emergency uh, exit lights. So this is the control for the emergency exit lights. Just turn them to arm. And uh, another thing that you have to see, that the APU bleed is off and this, this uh, crossfeed is showing a vertical line. Uh, APU bleed, as I've told you before, it's actually a compressed air generated by the APU, the auxiliary power unit of the plane, which is used to start the engines. So once I uh, have the APU running, and then I will turn on the APU bleed to turn on the engines. But right now, just make sure it's off and the crossfeed shows a vertical line. Now, uh, this is the air conditioning panel. Um, right now, it's, everything is in the middle. You can always adjust the air conditioning. Um, you can do it yourself. Um, and uh, now coming to this point, uh, this part of the, the, the cockpit, you will see these two controls, these two switches, flight director and uh, slash FPV. Uh, just make sure it's on. Uh, it's not in the off position. If it's off, you will not see the flight director over here. When you turn it on, you see this crossbar. It means the flight director is on. Uh, then uh, for the map, uh, you have different views. You have um, VOR, NAV, and ILS. What's the difference uh, for all those people who are actually new to the flight simulation, new to the planes, new to the aviation? Um, this actually button uh, determines what kind of view you will see on the navigation display, which is over here. Uh, so NAV, it means right now, um, it's uh, following uh, the GPS flight plan or the GPS coordinates. If uh, you select it, turn it to VOR, then it will be actually tracking uh, the VOR, which is a very high frequency omnidirectional radio. Uh, it actually is ground-based navigation device. And um, an older way of uh, navigating uh, your flight plan, you have VORs all over the world, you track a VOR, and then you land the plane. I will, in this flight, I will not be doing any uh, VOR uh, flight. So that's why I will not turn it to VR, and, uh, and when once I'm about to land, I will turn it to ILS to get these uh, ILS indicators over here on the primal flight display. So right now, just set it to uh, nav. Okay. In this flight, there is uh, there are I think few uh, VRs that are being used uh, because um, this plane knows uh, the GPS coordinate of the VR. So instead of uh, tracking the radio signals emitted by the VR. This plane actually takes the GPS coordinates of that viewer to, may f to fly. It's something interesting. You can also make your flight plans based on the GPS coordinates of the viewer and it will fly. All you have to do is just select the waypoint in the flight plan part of the MCDU and it will just follow that. Okay, uh, that's it. Now, um, what else? Uh, you have to now adjust the altimeter. Uh, for this, uh, I should have uh, the barometric pressure. The plane actually measures uh, the height of the plane uh, using the barometric pressure. So you have to adjust it accordingly. So uh, let me just go back to the operational flight plan. Go to this uh, weather page because I just forgot it's 1010. So right now you can see um, uh, the altitude is, uh, um, is uh, coming as 2100. This is obviously not uh, the exact altitude of uh, King Khalid International Airport above the sea level. 
it's less. So if I go with 1010, zero, one, zero. so now the exact altitude is coming. So have, you have to actually adjust the, the altitude. It's just like when you're measuring uh, uh, something on a scale and uh, you are using any other uh, pot to weigh something. Let's say if you are trying to weigh water <laughs> or anything like a jelly or anything, but you need a pot to do that. So when you put the pot on the scale, you first of all adjust um, um, your weighing scale and you press it, uh, press a button on your weighing scale to basically take it to zero. So less uh, the weight of the pot and then you put the liquid or whatever you have in that pot and then you weigh it. So it's just like the same way, you're adjusting the altimeter to the, to the given one right now so the plane knows what's the difference and once it's adjusted then it calculates the right altitude uh, for every airport, there is a transition altitude in which you basically uh, move from the given um, barometric pressure to the standard one. I think for Riyadh uh, airport, it's 13,000 feet. If I'm not wrong, you can always consult the standard instrument departure chart. You can see at what altitude you will change this barometric pressure from the given one to the standard one. That's it. Uh, now you have to even uh, set the landing elevation. If you look over here, you will see this uh, meter. Just move it and set it to 100 feet because, you know, uh, it's, I think, um, Abu Dhabi International Airport is 30, 40 feet above the sea level. So that's why uh, 100 is the option that's coming over here. So you can set it to 100. Landing elevation, it has to be set. And uh, uh, landing gear warning test. So this is the landing gear warning test button. If you click this, you will hear this sound and this warning sign comes which means the um, it's it's okay so if you're landing and your landing gears are not down you will hear this error okay then the rudder trim uh, rudder is actually at the back of the plane which uh, this is the rudder it actually uh, sets the nose left to right so let's say if you're flying and, and there is a crosswind and the wind is blowing from this side, so it will actually move the plane towards the right side. So in order to keep the plane on the course, this rudder will actually turn towards this side in order to move the plane towards left. So during the flight, the nose will be straight. So this is actually a rudder trim, and uh, you can press this button to reset it. Just make sure it's reset, otherwise you can always change it. You can see I'm moving the rudder. If I Has, has it changed? I think the hydraulic systems are not up, that's why rudder will not move but you can always reset it, okay? That's it. Now, uh, after this, we have to configure the MCDU for the rest of the flight. Uh, so after the initialization, uh, I have to set the flight plan. So let's go to the flight plan. And you can see the flight plan is already there because I've imported from the sim brief all the waypoints and uh, the airways are coming. So um, uh, the plane after taking off from o OERK, uh, Riyadh, it will go direct to Altav and then to Gibas uh, using the um, airway H976, then to Musri uh, H976, and then to Kesem uh, L604. If you keep on scrolling down, you will see all the waypoints and the airways. This is Bahrain VOR actually, by the way. <laughs> this is what I was telling you that in this flight plan, we have a VOR. Uh, but it is using an airway to go to this uh, VOR and it's using its GPS coordinates instead of tracking uh, the radio signals emitted by this VOR. And then so and so forth, you can keep on scrolling down, you will see the top of descent uh, over here at this point, you will start your descent towards uh, the Abu Dhabi International Airport and um, then you have Ukili, uh, the point after which the standard terminal arrival will start. But as you can see, nothing is coming because we have to select the SID and the star for this flight. And then you have the arrival airport, which is Abu Dhabi International Airport. So let's go back. And uh, you can see uh, the rest of the waypoints uh, for the standard instrument departure are not coming. So what I'll uh, do is this. I will select OERK. I'll go here over here. And uh, I'll select this option, SID, standard instrument departure. 33 right is the runway that I will be taking in ALTA-1K. Uh, ALTA-1K is the uh, standard instrument departure. So if I select this, and if I press this button, insert, then you will see that more waypoints are coming before ALTA V1K. So before this, ALTA V was uh, saying direct there because um, I haven't selected the standard instrument departure, so that's why it was saying direct. But now it's showing me that ALTA 1K, uh, this procedure will actually take me to this point. And for this, uh, first of all, I will go to this um, waypoint bottom, and then Rima and Keyboard and then Alta. 
this is the time coming in uh, UTC that by this time I will be at uh, these points and uh, this is the uh, speed and the altitude. So uh, 250 knots uh, at this point I should be uh, more than um, 7000 feet at 20,000. 20,000 and you know, um, less than 20,000, not more than 20,000, uh, can be at 20,000, but over here at this point, more than 20,000. And that's uh, so and so forth. And over here at this point, speed should be 250, 2,900 feet. Uh, so this is all there. Uh, let me just show you the standard instrument departure as well. So if you go to this uh, Navigraph option, um, you can see uh, the standard instrument departure. If I click this option, now, this uh, chart is coming, which is the standard instrument departure. It has some information, which I will tell you how to read it. Uh, this is actually part of the takeoff briefing. So you should know uh, when uh, after you, the takeoff, where the plane is going and what constraints it has to follow. On top of it, you can see transition altitude is coming, 13,000 feet. After 13,000 feet, you will be uh, changing the barometric pressure from the given one to the standard. So this is how you get the transition altitude. And then you can see uh, that after the takeoff at bottom, uh, the plane should be above 2,900 feet. Rima, uh, the plane should be more than uh, 7,000. And Keyball, um, you can see the line is on the top, so it means 20,000 or below. And over here, the line is at the bottom, which means uh, 20,000 and above. Unfortunately for this plane, um, there is a, um, 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 an autopilot option, which is known as the profile climb or descent, which you can get by... Uh, getting this option uh, profile it actually has to follow if you turn on the profile descent or profile climb it has it, it actually has to follow all these constraints but unfortunately it um, follows the speed constraints but the altitude constraints are not followed so you have to even do it yourself now if you go down you have to select the star and uh, the runway so for this uh, OMAA uh, let's select this standard terminal arrival let's select this now um, the runway uh, will be 31 left, as I've shown you before. And as I've shown you before, Atrid will be the point. And uh, I think it's 4C. Yeah. And just press insert. Now this flight plan is there. And you can see top of climb is also coming. After Gibbous, the plane will be at top of climb. And uh, the top of descent is also coming. And then you can see all the waypoints are there. Now, something interesting I want to tell you. Uh, you can uh, look at the flight plan over here on the navigation display. Uh, just simply move this knob to plan. This is actually the EFIS part of the, um, of the cockpit, which is the electronic flight instrument system. You can set it to plan and then you can scroll through the flight plan to see whether your flight plan is good or not. And as you can see, this flight plan is good it's as per the diagram shown in the sim brief. So you can scroll through it. Uh, let me just go on the top of the flight plan. And let me just show you. So that's it. That's it. It's good now. If you ever see any discontinuity over here in the flight plan, uh, look for two things. Either uh, you can delete the discontinuity or there will be another point coming as vector on top of the discontinuity. You have to delete, uh, delete both of them. In order to delete any discontinuity or a vector, simply press this button clear and then uh, select the adjustment key, uh, the, the soft key uh, to the waypoint and then you can click it and it will be deleted. But if you are seeing a vector and then a flight discontinuity, you have to delete the vector first and then the flight discontinuity. As in this flight plan, there's no vector discontinuity coming. So that's why I couldn't tell you. That's it. And uh, then after this, uh, you have to uh, go to this option initialization B page. So go to initialization page and you can see this error is coming. Go to the next page. You have to set the block fuel and uh, cable not closed. Yes, it is not. <laughs> so the block fuel is 11 tons. Let's enter 11 over here. And then you have uh, the zero fuel weight. So zero fuel weight is, if I'm not wrong, 100 and uh, how much is the fuel? zero fuel weight? Let's check. 105.4. Did I read it right? 105.4. Okay. 
these are actually uh, informa- this information of for the weight and for the fuel has to be entered so that the autopilot knows what is going on which is the flight management guidance system control and guidance system and uh, take off gross weight is coming zero fuel weight center of gravity and uh, this will is coming over here 25.2 so you have to set this b- basically it 25.2 it actually determines whether to pitch up or down uh, the nose during the takeoff so this trim is coming 1.2 up which means we will set the trim over here in such a way then the nose will be pitched up 1.2 because the center of gravity is slightly towards the forward so that's why you have to pitch up otherwise if it's at the back there's um, sorry at the back there is more uh, at the front there is weight and if it's a back then obviously plane will be pitched up a lot during the takeoff so you have to trim it down and that's how you do it uh, now the last thing that you have to do is this takeoff performance calculation for the takeoff performance uh, calculation you have to go to the electronic flight back you have to go to this option which uh, shows you this plane this is actually um at the page where you uh, get the speeds for the takeoff the v1 vr and v2 and uh, that's it so you can refresh this to get the weather update you can see uh, the weather information has already picked up the wind the outside temperature and the qnh all you have to do is this enter the runway length how to get the runway length i'll tell you it's a very simple procedure just go to uh, the navigraph charts if you have access to it and then you can uh, have a look at the airport chart over here and you can see uh the runway length for the runway 33 right is 4205 meters it's coming in feet as well and plus in the meters so we'll simply pick up this 4205 and the heading is 327 as you can see it's coming over here for 33 right 327 so 4205 and 327 i'll click here three to seven wind is coming outside temperature is coming qnh is coming total weight how much is the total weight of the plane if you go here you will see and uh, that the gross weight is 116.5 tons 116.5 sorry <laughs> let me just do it again uh the flaps uh, will be 15/15 slash 15. uh this plane has an interesting setting uh, you not only extend the slats and uh, you also extend the flaps and the rest of the planes let's say if you're flying airbus a320 or 787 or 737 uh you only have settings for the flaps and as soon as you extend the flaps the slats are also open but in this plane you can you can individually uh, control the slats and the flaps the first setting is 15 slats zero flaps so if you move this uh, lever down uh you will have only slats set to 15 slats are actually at the front of the wing and the flaps are at the back so these are the slats over here on the wing so they will be extended and the flaps are at the back that's it so um i have set it to 15 flaps and 15 slats you can always set it um if you need but just keep it here um you um, during the take off uh, the main aim is to basically have your flaps in order to give lift but um, with the lift they also provide drag so you want to basically take off with the minimum you know, flap setting so that you know you get the required lift but you know the drag is not there so that's that's why you set minimum flaps and slats on so during the landing you go with the full flaps because it's the safest way to land you have the full flaps you get the lift you can reduce the speed as much as you want and then you can land anti ice engine only air conditioning will be on and once i have this i will press this button calculate now you can see v1 vr and v2 is coming so v1 vr is the speed uh, before which you can uh, just uh, decide to abort the takeoff so before this line if it, at this point i don't want to take off then i can stop but after this point or at this point i have to take off and after the takeoff i want to reach the speed v2 uh which is the speed a plane can still function and fly without uh one engine uh, so even if the one engine is running uh if the plane achieves v2 you can um, just always turn turn around and come back and land uh flex to temperature is actually um um what you can say an adjusted temperature which tells the flight management computer and guidance system that the outside temperature is really high so go easy on the thrust <laughs> so during the takeoff when you turn on the auto thrust 
it's always reduced because uh, right now you can see the outside temperature was 32 or 35, but right now it's 20 degrees high. So you are actually bluffing the, the system that the temperature is very high, so don't go crazy on the engines. <laughs> so go, give a reduced thrust and um, uh, the plane will still take off. So you have to enter this uh, information over here. Uh, so press this button, flex to temp, and set 55 over here. So now during the takeoff, when you turn on the auto thrust, the plane will actually uh, climb with the reduced thrust, not with the full power. And uh, then V1, V2 is 138 and 138. So I will just enter 138 and 138 over here. And for the V2, I will be going over here on the FCU, the flight control unit, and I will set it to 165, if I'm not wrong. Yes, 165. That's it. As I've shown you before, um, that uh, after the takeoff, as per the standard instrument departure chart, uh, the altitude uh, the plane uh, has to follow is 20,000 feet. So the first constraint that we have is for 20,000. So I can adjust the altitude. If you can see, if when I'm moving the stop, it's uh, incrementing in hundreds. But if I click, if I push this, when, when I see this up arrow button and I push it, then the increments are in hundreds. And then you can always change it to thousands. So I will set it to 20,000. So after the takeoff, I will try to go 20,000. And after that point, I will just climb up. And uh, the heading of the runway, if I'm not wrong, this was uh, 327. Yes, 327. So let's adjust uh, 327 over here. That's it. So uh, this is what you have to uh, set. Now it's uh, time to actually lock the cockpit doors and turn on the APU because now uh, all the uh, programming in the MCDU is done. Uh, so. I can lock the cockpit. You can see this button. Just once you see this down arrow, just click it and the cockpit door is now locked. Nobody can come in and out, go out <laughs> of the cockpit. Okay, now it's time to turn on the APU. Uh, so you can see this um, uh, master switch uh, for the APU. Just turn it on and then you start the APU. Now over here on the eCam, you will see uh, this uh, cabin door is open. Has, is open. So what you can do is this. You can always uh, close it, go to the ground settings and just disconnect the jetway and uh, then the door is closed and now you can see all the errors have disappeared and now you on the ecam ecam is actually uh, the electronic centralized aircraft monitoring screens so left one on the right one over here you will see the memos coming and the outside temperature and the fuel tank temperature um, temperature gross weight and center of gravity is coming and then on the right side you will see different information related to the APU, the engines, um, the doors. So now if I click this, uh, you can see, if I click this option on this ECAM, you can see all the doors are now closed. And if I go to this option APU, I will see the APU. It will take some time for the APU to start. And once the APU starts, then you can turn on the APU bleed and then you can go for the pushback. Now you can see the APU is now running. So I will wait for uh, this N percent to go to 100. EGT is the exhaust gas temperature. And right now, 245, 250 degrees centigrade. So this temperature will keep on rising and, and at a certain temperature, it will just stabilize. So once uh, you have APU running, you will see you will be getting power from the APU. This arrow will move up. And this is the pressure, you know, the compressed air from the APU bleed. So once I tell the APU bleed, you will also see the pressure in, in, in PSI. Now you can see the APU generator voltage is coming. So now it says APU available. Now the APU is available, 110 volts are there. And the exhaust gas temperature is now reducing. It will also stabilize at a certain point. And now you can see there is no pressure for the APU bleed. Uh, you can always turn it on. If I turn on the APU bleed, you can see 35 PSI is coming. Now this compressed is, air is also there and then it will help you in turning on the engines. If the APU bleed is not on, the engine won't start. Now, as you have the power, you can always disconnect the external power, and that's it. Now you can see uh, the plane has got its independent power source. So now, before the pushback, let's do a few things. Uh, just check the seatbelt signs are still on. Yes, they are on. Um, I've set the navigation uh, information over here. I've set the speed, the V2, the altitude. I've set the, the heading 
if I want to uh, fly in the heading mode after the takeoff, then I will be using this option. But otherwise, for this flight, I will be using this option. Now, I will turn this uh, button on because as soon as I turn on the autopilot, the plane will actually follow the GPS coordinates and the flight plan entered in the MCDU and it will just go. Profile, I will just turn it on. The plane will actually determine the, uh, the vertical path, when to climb, when to descend, how much uh, the speed of the plane should be. Uh, so this is all done by the uh, profile. In other part of the video, I will also tell you uh, how this uh, level change and altitude hold will, uh, will come into action. But for this video, let's set it to profile and nav. And once you take off, simply turn on the autopilot and the autopilot do do rest of the things for you. you all, all you have to do is just adjust the altitude and the plane will follow it. Uh, then over here, uh, anti-skid, just uh, make sure uh, brake is set to normal, anti-skid is on and all the doors are closed. I've checked that. Now, as I'm going to start the engines, I will be turning this um, beacon on. Beacon is actually a light on the top of the back of the plane, top and uh, the bottom of the plane. It uh, basically blinks. Uh, you can see it's blinking over here, which actually tells the ground staff uh, that uh, we are going to start the engine so that they can clear this area. And uh, plus, during the flight also, this is a very bright light which keeps on blinking and the planes from the distance can identify your plane. All the doors are closed now. Uh, if you click this option, door, uh, here it is, you will see all the doors are now closed. Uh, now I'm going to release uh, uh, the brakes and uh, I will now call for the pushback. So if you go over here, you can prepare for the pushback, even the GPU, uh, which is GPU van, which is connected. Although we have disconnected the external power from, from the plane, we still have to disconnect the GPU from the plane. So let's press this button, prepare for pushback and departure, and the GPU is disconnected. Now you can always uh, press this button to start the pushback, and uh, now you can see the tug will be moving uh, to push the plane back. Uh, with this, I can release uh, release the parking brakes, already released. So let's wait for the pushback to start, external brakes off. Now you can see all the lights are off, only uh, you can see some... Uh, lights on for the hydraulic power. As soon as I will uh, turn on uh, the engines, you will see that this will also go because um, you get the hydraulic power with the engines. Now the pushback has started and um, as I have to go uh, this side because the runway is over here. So I will uh, turn the plane to the right. The pushback is a bit tricky in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You cannot be so accurate. I've been practicing it a lot, but still my accuracy is very bad. So right now what I can do is this, I can uh, turn towards right and after the pushback I can then just proceed with the engine startup procedure. So everything is looking good so far and uh, this is an easy plane to fly, although it's kind of a, uh, what you can say a very nice steady level plane. So all the features are working, so that's why you have to do so many things. But still, you, if you go through these videos, you will be able to do a flight and uh, this plane will no longer be a difficult one for you. And if you can uh, just like start this plane, then if you go to the um, X-Plane 12 and you try to fly the Airbus A330, it will be easy for you. This is the plane that, uh, the next plane that I'm planning to explore, A330. Oh, well, this uh, pushback was good. I can always stop it. And then once you stop the pushback, you can always engage the parking brakes. And that's it, because as soon as you'll start the engines, if the parking brakes are not engaged, the plane will keep on rolling. And that's it. Now, first of all, in order to start the engines, you go over here on the overhead panel and uh, you set this uh, ignition switch to A. And once you do this, uh, just press this engine two start button. You first of all uh, start the engine two and then you start the engine one. Now, once you have pressed it, you can see uh, from on the engine two, there is a movement in the needles. You can see this N2 is moving. And uh, once the N2 reaches 20%, uh, you can turn on the fuel selector for the engine two, 20%, and I can just turn it on. And now the engine two will start. So let's go out and see. You can see now this engine two is now running. With this, I can always turn on the engine one. But I just wanted to show you something. There's something really interesting happens in this plane. Right now, the electrical systems on the right side of the plane are on APU. So as soon as you have power coming in from the engine, then the electrical system automatically switches to uh, uh, the engine. So, you know, you see this light blinks. It means you have now power coming in from the 
engines. Now similarly for engine one, just uh, press this engine start button and uh, engine fuel selector. Oops. I think I just touched the, in the thrust, that's why <laughs> this uh, thrust lever was in a uh, very funny position. Now uh, for the engine one, N2, 20%, uh, it's running. Okay, great. I think this error will go. Actually, I did a mistake. <laughs> I just touched it and uh, this th uh, the thrust was there, but uh, this will go as soon as we have. Now it has switched to, the left side has switched to. Now you can see, <laughs> this error has gone. Kindly excuse me for that. Now the APU is running. Um, just uh, keep on looking at the ECAM during the flight as the name suggests. It is uh, the electronic centralized aircraft monitoring system. The, the screens, so that's why uh, you have to actually keep an eye over here and just in order to see what's going on. Now, the, as, as soon as uh, both the engines stabilize, uh, you can uh, then turn off the engine uh, selector. You can just turn it off. Uh, sorry, you have to move it to this option, continuous. And uh, then the APU, just turn off the APU and turn off the APU bleed. And uh, now the APU is also off. Uh, turn on the anti-ice, just press this. And now you can see the anti-ice is also on. Now you set the flaps and slats for the takeoff. So 15 slats, so one position down. You will have uh, 15 slats and one more position down, you will have 15 slats and 15 flaps. So just set it to this position, you will see both these indicators will come to 15 over here, okay? You have this and uh, set the takeoff uh, trim as well, 1.2 up. So if I just go here, you will see right now it's uh, zero. So I can just move it. It's now it's one and two. I think it's round about here. So now you have set the takeoff trim as well. And uh, Auto brakes to max in case you um, abort the takeoff, you need uh, some um, good braking. So that's why you set the auto brake to max. And uh, then transponder, uh, set it to TARA. You can see uh, the transponder is over here. You just move it all the way to right. Uh, sorry, over here on this option, all, all the way to the right is not here. It's on this position, TARA. Just set it to TARA and then you will have uh, your awareness of the, the traffic. Okay. You get um, the alerts for the traffic during the flight. And uh, then what you have to do is this, you have to do the flight control test. Just simply go over here and uh, you see this button, flight control, just press this button. You will see the ailerons and the elevators and the rudders. All you have to do is this, first of all, move the yoke forward and uh, you can see the elevator, it's moving. So it means you have the hydraulic pressure coming. If you go left, you will see the ailerons working and then you have the rudder working. Now just before the taxi, you have to turn on the lights. Uh, so first of all, uh, turn on uh, the logo light also. And uh, this is a light at the, 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 the tail of the plane. You have to turn this light on. Then you have a nose light for the taxi. If I just go out, you will see this nose light is also here. But this uh, nose light is only for the forward. You can always turn on the runway, turn off lights left and right. Even in the night, you have then lights on the left and the right side of the plane so that the pilots can see on the left and the right hand side. And uh, then set the landing lights to off position, but before the takeoff, as soon as I'm on the runway, I will turn it on and the wing light also on. Just have the maximum lights available for you even in the morning so that the distance, uh, planes from the distance are able to see your plane easily. Okay, so now you have the wing lights, you have your runway turn off lights and everything is there. And that's it. Now you can taxi to the runway and uh, perform a flight. So this video was uh, about uh, starting the plane from the cold and dark state. I also have my Twitch channel, uh, Arthur Femme 79. I just go there mostly and do some uh, live session on the Twitch. So you can always uh, go and subscribe to my Twitch channel and uh, plus uh, I am also on Discord. You can always follow me in Discord and we can have some good discussion over there. Thank you very much for staying with me. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.